Hey everyone, it's Linnea, and I'm back with a video for the Scrapping for Less shop, and I'm going to be using the Heffy Doodle Party Palooza stamp set to create a spinner card. I've never made a spinner card before, but it's quite easy, and I super love how this card turned out. So I have the little cake image, and I'm going to stamp it onto some uh, Copic-friendly paper, and I'm actually going to stamp this twice, because for a spinner card, you need two symmetric images, so you can... Um, butt them up back to back and you'll see what I mean later. So I also stamped the candle on the top of the cake but as you can see here it's not going to be symmetric because it has that little wax drip off to the side. So to fix that I'm just going to cut it off. So I took a Copic safe marker and just kind of drew a line straight down so that when I do my coloring I'm going to end up <clears throat> cutting off that drip mark. So speaking of coloring today I'm actually going to be coloring with Copics not watercolors so I grabbed a bunch of my markers and I will have a still shot of these markers that I'm using on my blog as well as the scrapping for less blog so I'm going to be doing some simple um, two color or two marker shading and coloring for this cake image I wanted the actual cake itself to be white so I used n2 as my shading and then I'm just blending it out with some colorless blender. Not even really blending, just kind of butting my marker up to where I had put the end to and softening that edge. For the plate, I am keeping it a gray plate using N2 and N0. And I'm going to be using G02 and G00 for the icing. I've been really trying to simplify my colors when I color. I think a lot of the reasons I don't like my colored images is because I try to use too many colors on one little image. So for this image, I have the minty green icing, the cake is going to be white, and the plate is going to be gray. And then I'm also going to actually do the candle white. Of course, I'll do the flame yellow, but I mean, so all in all, I have a total of like three or four colors here on this one little image. And I love how it turned out. So in the future, I'm really going to try my best to simplify my coloring. For the flame on the candle, just using a little YR07 to add some orange to the bottom, blending it out with yellow. And then I'm going to use the same colors on the candle as I did for the cake, N2 for my shading, and just kind of flick it out with a little bit of colorless blender. And then I cut them out with my scissors. I colored both the images the same way. And I took a marker and just kind of went around the outside edges. That makes the edges black. And when you cut right up against the line, it just makes it look more finished. I apologize for the light going crazy. My son is helping me here. He woke up from his nap, so he's playing with his little um, construction vehicle off to the side. And he frequently is there when I craft. I just try my best to keep him out of the frame. But today, he wanted to be in Mommy's video. So anyway, I have a piece of cardstock. I'm using the Altenew Scallop Builder stencil along with some scattered straw and cracked pistachio distress inks. And I just blend it on those inks. And now I have temporarily adhered that panel onto a card base. And I positioned a circle die in where I want it to be. And I'm die cutting through both the card base and that stenciled panel all at once because you want a window to go through the front of your card. Um, and so I found it easier just to die cut everything all at once and my die actually did go right through without any problems. I also die cut a little frame by using that same circle die as well as a larger circle die and that gave me that frame. I have some clear thread here. This is just regular sewing thread. And I took the stenciled panel I adhered some double-sided tape to the top and to the bottom of that circle window, and I'm doing my best to line up this thread so it'll be in the center of that circle. And it is clear thread, so I know it's hard to see, and I apologize for that. I couldn't really think of a way to make it so that you could see the thread. You're just gonna have to trust me that it's there. <laughs> um, so now I'm using my liquid adhesive, putting that all over the back of that stencil piece, and since I die cut the card fronts and the stencil piece together, it is really easy for me to line up that die cut um, center and just adhere the stencil panel onto the front. So like I said, I have that clear thread running down the middle. I've put some liquid adhesive onto my cake and I tried to center it. I got it a little off center, but I'm not concerned about it. 
and I just glued these back to back. And this is why you need a symmetric image to do a spinner card. It's because it has to be the front and the front and the same, excuse me, on the front and the back. So I glued them back to back onto that piece of clear thread. And then I'm going to add the little circle frames. And I did one on the inside as well as the outside just to give it a finishing look. And then once I'm done gluing that on, you're gonna be able to spin that little cake image around and around on the thread. And you're gonna close your card and put it in an envelope. And then when your recipient gets the card and they flip it open, that little cake image is going to spin around. Now, I did have a small area where the um, the images didn't line up correctly because I did hand cut these. So all I'm doing, I know I'm out of frame here, but I took a black marker and I'm just kind of covering up where any white peeks out. So that's just a little tip for you. If you have um, misaligned your images or if you haven't cut them perfectly, because there is going to be some error, just take a little black marker and cover that up and you'll be able to have that fixed no problem at all. All right, so you can see here that I went ahead and stamped a little sentiment at the bottom. And now, like I said before, you're just going to spin that little image around, close your card, and then when you open it, it'll spin around. Super cute. So when I had that stencil piece, I die cut out that circle to make the window for the spinner card. And I thought, why not just make another quick little card to go along with my first one. So I actually ended up making a duo of birthday cards and that is one of my resolutions for this year was to make more birthday cards. So I thank you all for joining me and I hope I'll see you next time. Bye!